Friends, today's book is Lost and Found. It's level E. Now, when you're thinking about level E books, some students are maybe below that level, some students are above that level, but some students are right at this level. But again, we're going to go through this book together. You're going to get an opportunity to try some reading strategies. If you don't know the words in the book, I'll help you with the words in the book. And then I really the goal is to think about some of the words in this book, maybe pick up some new sight words, and eventually do problem and solution at the end. So this book's called Lost and Found. It's about a girl who gets lost at a store, and you're going to learn all about her story. So Lost and Found, that's the title. You can go ahead and read that. Here we go. Lost and Found. Hmm. And that's one of your trick words you should recognize immediately upon seeing it. So when you're just you're looking at this title and you're like, hmm, let's see, lost and found. I know and lost, I can tap out. Lost. Lost. Found's got an, a vowel team, O U. Ow. Found. You haven't covered vowel teams, so you're not gonna cover them until first and second grade, but that's okay. Lost and you put things together, lost and found. So the focus question for the story is what should you do if you get lost in a store? So if this girl gets lost in the store, what should you do? Think about that for a minute. Discuss that out loud if you're reading with somebody at home, if you're just listening to the video, think about it for a minute. Hmm, what would you do if you get lost in a store? That's what this story is all about. Words to know up here, guard, lost, safe, salesperson, stranger, uniform. Some pretty big words. We can get, go through them together. I see them. You say them. Here we go. Up. First word. Guard. You say guard. Lost. You can tap that one out. Lost. Lost. Safe. You can tap out too, but we haven't gone over long vowels yet. When two vowels go walk and the first one does the talk, and this is an A consonant E. It's an A long A because of this E at the end. So safe. Safe. You don't hear the E. Salesperson. Stranger. Uniform. Down here, here are some trick words, some contractions, some trick words that are on your word lists. We'll go through them. Here we go. He's, she's, there, should, ask is going to be on just about every page. Should is going to be on every page. Him, her, them, go along with he, he's, she's, and there, and then I'm and can't. It's a lot of contractions in this book. Contractions are two small words put together to make a uh, even more condensed word, you're going to lose some letters and you're all of a sudden it's a short and form of a word. Here we go. Go ahead and see if you can read this. Great. I'm lost in the store. Hmm. Just tiptoeing around. How do you think she's feeling right now? Discuss that with somebody you're with. Maybe pause the video for a second and think about it. I am lost in the store. How do you think she's feeling? Go ahead and read it. Shouldn't have recognized that say word it is. M-O-M. Should recognize that word too. Where is mom? You can go ahead and read it together. Where is mom? Question mark. Oh boy. Now you can definitely get a feel for how is that Mary character feeling at this point in the story? How is she feeling? Maybe she's worried. Maybe she's sad. This is that trick where we talked about should. So let's give it a shot. See if you can read it. Should. So good readers, when they flip to a new page, if they have illustrations, they look at the pictures first. So she's looking. She's looking at the in and out. She's looking at the door. So when you read this, it's should I go outside? No. And oh, no, we cover that word. Mom can't find me there. So she's thinking to herself. You can kind of, the author's writing words giving you the thoughts inside of her head. She's not speaking, but she's saying, thinking inside her head, should I go outside? No, mom can't find me there. Hmm. Next page, let's see if you can read it, should, that's that should word again.
Hmm. So you probably recognize some words like I, or maybe for, or no again, a, this word, these, this page says, should I ask her for help? No, she's a stranger. She's a little apprehensive, a little worried about what's, should I ask somebody for help? Hmm, I'm not sure. Next page, that's that should word again. See if you can read it on your own. Pause it for a second and read it. So she finds somebody else in the store and she says to herself in her brain, she's like, hmm, should I ask him for help? No, he's a stranger. Hmm. Let's read it together. Should I ask him for help? No, he's a stranger. Still in the store. It's that should word, S-H-O-U-L-D, should. See if you can read it. There's that contraction. It's got a short form of a word in it. Look here. We got the word they. Changes to there. So what does this say? It says, should I ask them for help? No, they're strangers. That's tough. They're strangers. So you see that stranger word in the last couple pages? She sees a mom with a baby. Should I ask her for help? No. She's a man. Should I ask him for help? No. He's a stranger. And then should I ask them for help? They're in the sporting goods section. No. They're strangers. There's that should word again. Let's see if you can try reading this. This is a long one. Tough page. Should I ask that salesperson for help? That was one of our trick words at the beginning of the words to know in the book. Should I ask that salesperson for help? He's a safe stranger. He has a name tag. He's busy though. So he didn't interrupt him. He's Someone's checking out in line. She's like, oh, I see a salesperson that's a worker at the store. Seems safe. He has a name tag. He's busy. that should. So if you can read this, give it a shot. Pause it. So you know it's a, just looking at the picture, you know it's a she. Should I ask that guard for help? She's a safe stranger. She has a uniform. Hmm. Yes, I tell her that I'm lost. She calls mom. Let's go back to this page real quick. I tell her that I'm lost. She calls mom. Hmm. So the girl didn't have a phone, but she would have called her mom. What What do you think's happening here with the conversation between the girl that's lost and the security officer in the store. What do you think she had to do? I tell her I'm lost. She calls mom. What did she have to do? What did she have to tell her? She tell her a phone number. It's very important to know your phone number. Last page. See if you can read this last page. So clearly you can see from the picture up here, everyone's smiling, everyone's happy. I'm so happy to see mom. Mom says I did the right thing. I stayed put and only talked to safe strangers. So when you're flipping back through this book in a minute, 
I'm going to flip through and have you try to read this on your own if you want to give it a shot. Back to the beginning. Just going to kind of point at words, give you an opportunity to read the book again. Why don't you think about the beginning of the story, the middle of the story, and the end of the story. When we go through guided reading stories, especially at this D, E, F, G, H level, what we're looking for is for readers to be able to say, what this is what happened at the beginning, this is what happened in the middle, and this is what happened in the end. So pause for a second right now and think about what happened in the beginning, how would I describe what happened in the end of the story, how would I describe what happened in the middle of the story, how would I describe what happened in the end of the story? Well, beginning of the story, got lost in a store. She couldn't find her mom. In the middle of the story, she kept coming up to different people. First three or four people she came up to in the middle of the store were strangers. And she thought, mm, I shouldn't talk to them. They're strangers. I shouldn't ask for help. No, they're strangers. I shouldn't talk to them. They're strangers. Toward the end of the book, she's trying to f get somebody to help her. So in the middle, she's jumping up to these people to get help. She can't she finally realizes that there's some people, there's a person at the checkout toward the end. He's busy. And finally at the end, she comes up to a, a woman in a uniform, asks her for help, calls her mom. And at the, finally, at the end of the story, she finds her mom. So if you were describing the beginning, middle, and the book, that would be it. The more details, the better. This is your opportunity to read. Here we go. Lost and found. Lost and found. Pause those pages. Read it. Pause it. Read it. You need more time. Pause it. So if you come to a word, should I ask for help? So should, so it's a trick word. You're going to need to recognize it right away. Can't tap that one out. Should I ask for help? No. She's a stranger. Some of these words, we haven't gone over the, the phonics rules for them. It's okay. You can attack the beginning sounds and use the picture and try to figure it out. So there's the guard. Okay, now that we're done with the story. Think about how the girl is feeling at the beginning of the story, the middle of the story, the end of the story. How is she feeling at the beginning? How is she feeling in the middle? How is she feeling in the end? So one of the questions you're going to get from teachers when you get to when we sit down to try to level you in, re in reading, we're going to ask you questions about the story. You're going to have to describe how the character was feeling at different points in the story. Think about how the girl is feeling at the beginning. She was really worried. In the middle, she was scared to go up to people. And at the end, of this, she was very happy. She found her mom. So if you're able to describe those feeling words throughout the story, that's great. All right, it's your activity over on Google Classroom if you want to get it, give it a shot. In here, you're going to write down the problem in the story. What's the problem? What's going wrong? Just click in here and you type it in. The problem. In the story was that, that, that type it in, and then right here in the middle, you're going to do two possible solutions. Two possible solutions means two ways that she could have solved it, or two ways that she tried to solve it in the story. She, so trying to use text evidence. What does text evidence means? Text evidence means that there's something in the story on the page you saw her do. Two ways that she tried to solve her problem. And then the actual solution. How did she actually finally solve her problem? That's the actual solution. So go ahead and complete that. Turn it in on Google Classroom. 
we had 13 students turn in yesterday's. Let's go for 20. Go for 20. These are great ways to practice some reading comprehension. Thanks, friends.